much for those little chicken legs. <laughs> exactly. It's, oh it's my a, god! It's a heavy load. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, he's going the other way now. <laughs> well, at least he can't run away really far. Look, even the leg animation is like super slow. I know, it's right? So those quirky. poor little legs. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. Where are we? This is the Witch Farm, and that is a load of redstone I'm putting together because we want to take the drops from the Witch Farm and load them directly into Shulker Box loaders. That is correct. I have constructed a Shulker Box loader and pretty much put the finishing touches on this project. I have flown around placing down a redonkulous amount of torches, getting every little surface, every little cave, lighting the whole thing up so that the rates here can be utterly fantastic. But I think there might be one more thing for me to do, which is to slab the swamp because slimes can still spawn here. I may also eventually put a decorative touch on this area so that when we come out of the portal, we aren't just greeted by a bamboo mess. But as you know, we are gunning to build our storage system and I really need to get my hands on lots of redstone. And I'm pleased to say that after building this, one overnight session has yielded me a fully loaded shulker box of each of these, actually. We've got the redstone, the glowstone. I'm not collecting sugar and I'm not collecting spider eyes. I am collecting the witch heads. That's why things look a little different on this side because we don't need the shulker box loader for that. We get far less of these. Anyway, the item filters are a little quirky because they actually use like a dropper as a T flip flop here. And so we have two item filters for each item. So the hopper then down here kind of swings it into that barrel where it goes down and around to the shulker box loader. And because there's space one apart down here, there's no way that the shulker can accidentally like pop out to the side or anything like that. So it should work flawlessly. And for a demonstration of how it works, we should look at it in this creative world. When this redstone signal goes up by one, it's because the shulker box will be full. We've got a comparator here to power that. So then that's going to update the observer, which sends a signal all the way through these observers back to here. This is going to power the piston. So it's going to push out, break the shulker box, and then it's going to move back. And another one is going to be dispensed from down below. So let's just quickly see that in action and then break this so the signal strength goes back and we get a fresh empty shulker box. It's really cool stuff. And like we did last episode, we've got some honey blocks for getting the items into the filters through the hoppers. But things are a little different here because I was originally going to have these like go around in a circle in case it couldn't pick up items quick enough, which I don't think is a problem. But then I realized the items we aren't picking up don't get despawned so our circle is broken here and we just destroy the spider eyes and sugar with fire so yeah because of that it, it kind of looks a little strange that we built it this way and just like last season we are using this magical block which is from one of our data packs when the server is about to restart it will create a pulse and i've hooked it up to a copper bulb here which is a fantastic very compact t flip-flop so this means that the farm is on the flying machines will be going back and forth down below. And then when the server restarts, of course, this gets powered again. So the flying machines stop. And that means that they won't get broken when there's a server restart. So this project is all wrapped up for now. And we've got a couple of novel spectacles to show you. The first of which you saw at the very beginning of the episode. Oh my god, Zedaf, you've done it. I'm, I'm just walking my, my, my villager, nothing special. You, you've done it. <laughs> this is amazing. You found what do you mean? You found a baby villager, no, a baby zombie on a chicken, and then cured it and let it grow up, right? Uh yeah, something like that. Yeah, dude, <laughs> this is like a, an absolute rarity. I think probably the rarest villager you can get in in some in some circles. So does this mean like if he wants to go to a workstation, the chicken will just walk over to it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, um, here, look, if I if I unlead him, you'll see he walks really slowly, if if at all. Ooh. Go on, go on, sir. <laughs> there you go. It's too much for those little chicken legs. <laughs> exactly. It's, oh it's a, my god! It's a heavy load. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, he's going the other way now. <laughs> well, at least he can't run away really far. Look, even the leg animation is like super slow. 
I know, they're right? So Those quirky. poor little legs. They're so little weedy stick legs, and yet they're carrying <sighs> such a heavy load. That's hilarious, man. Oh, he likes you. He does, yeah. <laughs> How long did it take you to find one of these? Did you look in caves and stuff? Uh, I I made a farm to spawn them Ooh. in, but it's still like a one in eight thousand chance or something crazy. Yeah, that's one of the rarest, one of the rarest Minecraft collectibles you can have. It, I think so. It's definitely a very uh, interesting sight to behold. That's for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> he's trying to look. And at he's it. a jungle right, villager. Uh... <laughs> yeah, he's a jungle even villager. Rarer. Oh, <laughs> so good, Zadab, So good. Thank you for showing but me, I'm man. Gonna con- no worries. I'm going to continue my stroll this way. Um, I'll-, I'll walk off into the sunset, shall I? Glorious. <laughs> what a glorious See you sight. later, man. So when I saw that, I knew exactly what ZF had done. I was aware of this quirk that you could get. A baby zombie villager on a chicken, turn it into a villager. But you should really go check out his episode as the process in which he did that is utterly fantastic. Now, I've got another novel site for you coming up in just a second, but I thought I'd mention that we have a name for our cat from the witch hut. This guy is going to be called Salem. There are an absolute ton of amazing name suggestions, but since I watched Sabrina the Teenage Witch as a kid, and I fondly remember that cat, we had to go with the name of Salem. Maybe this guy will start talking to me, who knows? Our next novelty is the Ender Dragon boss fight, except... Killed with firework rockets. This was a real spectacle to behold. So have you already killed it with fireworks? Yeah. yeah. yeah we've had oh, yeah, we're really good at it at this yeah. point. Nice. Are we <laughs> we're really spawning good at it. I don't the know next if I one? go that far, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Turn volume down warning. Oh, yep. yeah. thanks. Game volume. You might want to lower it a little bit. 1%. That's, that sounds good. How does, how does these... This one, <laughs> I don't have a crossbow, by the way. Jeez, Am I like... This breath. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, yeah, the firework rockets don't blow up the crystals. You gotta use a regular bow for those, fortunately. I was Ow. thinking getting underneath the dragon. Okay, dragon's flying over top. Let off a rocket. It's a miss. <laughs> it, it is hard <laughs> it's while it's flying. It's pretty hard to shoot them, yeah. yeah. Light it up. Here we go. Here we go. Super fun time. Dang, it's, it's really like a fireworks show. <laughs> oh look at that thing it's taking damage oh my gosh is there not a cap on how much damage it can take at once from fireworks seems not yeah, uh, i don't think lot. so i was uh, oh, i man. was stabbing it so i was underneath the head <laughs> you're oh, stabbing no. oh, it you're oh, oh i see <laughs> oh it's coming in it's coming in for the perch yeah here we go here i'm we also go. missing here my go. pickaxe too you have my pickaxe by chance uh i don't have a pickaxe no oh my god it's not gonna go uh, oh, should be killed smooth already. as here. Come at me. Come this is the me. this is the best way to do the dragon fight because it's so pretty. Yeah, it is kind of cool. Saying, most colorful fly, fight ever. It yeah, it's definitely cool the best way I've ever fought the dragon before. Oh, it's close. Come here, buddy. <laughs> it doesn't want to. It does not want to. Oh, it's gonna perch, isn't it? Got to get it before it yeah. perches. Mm -hmm. No, you can well, get it while it's, it's perching. Hey, hey nice. let's go. Woo. <sighs> Good job, GG. So we are starting this episode off with a, a bunch of little odds and sods, and there was something I needed to take care of in a live stream. So look at this. What we got? These fellas. I don't know how they got in here. I think someone might have left that open, and a baby zombie came down here. But a baby zombie shouldn't be able to reach or climb in at all. So it's a bit of a mystery. Also, the area behind them is properly sealed. So I don't know what's going on here. Right, one potion of weakness should hit the both of them. There it is. They, I think, did that get them both? I can see particle effects on you. I'm not, all right, I'm going to throw one more. No, not like that. <laughs> right, that's definitely got us now. Boom, boom, really quick. God, that's so loud. Because I don't want, I don't want this guy turning that guy back. So we do those both close together. When they get turned back, we'll need one more villager, and this is complete. Yes, we had an infestation problem, which I managed to take care of, and we also had one space left in the trading hall, so I whizzed over to Coralis's breeder again to get a villager from there and bring it all the way back. That way. I knew you were going to go the wrong way. No, do not want to trade. There it is. There it is. Awesome, awesome. 
Hey, hey, hey. It's all looking good. Oh, no, no, no. no. There might be a problem here. There might be a problem. Oh, move quick. Move quicker. Move quicker. Move quicker. Get that thing. Oh, I thought it might push him into the wall. He's got a workstation. That's good. This is this is all wonderful. Nothing went wrong. Thank goodness. So with that, we have a complete trading hall. And I actually use these trades to repair my gear. These produce so much XP. I've mentioned that before. These ones now have a fantastic discount just for me. But I realized that the pumpkins here have been filled up in these chests for a long, long time. So I added a little something around the back here. And this is how I get in. I just break into the building. So now the overflow of those pumpkins, which are actually coming through right now, will go through a composter, through a crafter, and produce some bone blocks for me. And that is a pretty efficient use of some waste product right there. So I don't have a much of a plan for this episode. I was going to craft up lots of the redstone components for our storage system. That's when I kind of got a little inspired to automate this somewhat. Now, last season, when me and Cybot designed the storage system that'll go in this space, the crafter wasn't even a thing yet. And fortunately, there was a little bit of slack space next to the entrance. So the entrance is going to be somewhere around here. And then there was just this panel on the wall that didn't really have anything. So it'll be opened up and we'll be able to walk up and use this auto crafting interface. And you can probably tell from looking at it conceptually how it works. You can see there's a bit more redstone than you might expect. And there's some quirks about the redstone that meant I had to use a lot of observers to make this reliable. But anyway, I've brought with me some shulker boxes of supplies. So I want to make a whole bunch of repeaters. And so we're going to start by making some torches. The first thing that arrives into the crafter is redstone and then sticks. And over here, we need to configure that. And what's important is that we actually come in here and disable all of these slots. Now, to craft something in the crafter, you don't actually have to disable those slots as long as the items are in the right spot. But the thing is, we're doing some comparing of signal strength around the back here. So it's really important when this thing fills up that it gets that signal. Now, in order to activate this thing without powering other redstone components, it turns out that this right here is a pretty good way to do it. Just create a simple pulse by changing the status of that comparator. And straight away, you look, you can see that it's working. If I open it up, the items are going in one by one. They're being ejected from the droppers into the hoppers and gliding across. So if we go around the back here, you'll see that when we successfully craft, we create a pulse right here that's picked up by the rails and sent through all of the observers to power the droppers one by one. This is really, really cool. And it's probably going to be best used for batch crafting simple recipes. If I go ahead and just put in more sticks and redstone, we can leave this thing running. So this is significantly slowed down if I'm just trying to make repeaters because, yeah, these redstone torches are taking a while, right? And I could pretty much craft this stuff quicker in a crafting bench anyway. But let's go ahead and drop these in the correct order to make repeaters on this side. Got to configure the crafter, then click the comparator, and it just works. This one, however, is a little bit slower because it takes more time for all the items to get in before it crafts. So when it finishes doing its crafting, it's just finished. There's nothing else you have to do, right? It's done. But remember, I didn't put the right amount of redstone torches in over on this side. So then things are going to start to go wrong. Uh-huh. But that's it. It just stops at that point. So we're left with items in the dropper. This is where the management of it becomes a little bit of a pain if you don't have the right amount of ingredients. So really the best case use is if you've got all of the components and you can fill up these droppers. So just take a moment to imagine doing a bunch of crafting with this. You can see how it seems like a great idea at first, but it actually slows you down. The thing is, though, I love the interaction with redstone. And I think the most fun I had here was actually putting the contraption together. I really do think the best use case for crafters is automation. So that's where you've got like a stockpile of a material or perhaps it's hooked up to a farm and then it automatically crafts. So when you come in and pull out some repeaters, it just starts making some more. That, of course, gets pretty complicated when you have components that also need crafting beforehand, too. We've already done some of this this season and of course we'll do some more complex stuff later on 
Right now, though, I want to show you a quirk with setting this up using redstone, which is the simpler way of doing it and probably something many of you expected me to do. So as you can see, we're crafting sea lanterns and everything is absolutely fine. Now, if I've understood the problem correctly, if we go ahead and actually just break some of these hoppers and replace them, this will break the contraption because the hopper update order will be different. I placed these originally from left all the way to right in a sequential order and now obviously we've gone ahead and changed that let's put the redstone back let's press the button and now the item should be coming in in a different order and there it is it's broken and that's simply because i changed the order in which i placed the hoppers so yeah that's a really peculiar quirk of how hoppers get updated and so i decided to make it more reliable by uh, putting the observers like this so we definitely power them one at a time and then it doesn't matter what order we've actually placed the hoppers in. I also had an idea along the lines of using comparators here from the droppers to detect when you run out of items. So if you don't put in a full stack, the system could automatically shut off when it detects one of the droppers running out. But then you got the issue of maybe not even using some of the droppers because your crafting recipe only uses a couple of slots. The one other thing I thought might be useful is knowing if you've left some items in a dropper from a previous crafting session. So another possible amendment to this contraption would be to add something like so, so you could see when there were items in the dropper without having to open it. If you wanted to do that, you'd need to redesign some of the redstone over here to make space for those redstone torches and lamps. So I need over 10 stacks of repeaters. One thing you could do is maybe put some hoppers on the front here if you need more than the nine stacks. And I probably could have crafted that all quicker in a crafting bench, but this is a really fun way to do it. I can just now leave this thing running, come back later, and I'll have nine stacks of repeaters. And that's when it struck me. A redesign is in order. Look at this. <laughs> it's the same thing, except now the droppers face into the hoppers here so that we can have an additional hopper and chest full of materials. So down the end here, it still works the same way, except the crafter faces to the side, so you can store all of those items after they've been crafted. And as it goes, I need 26 stacks of hoppers for this storage system. Uh, this is all the chests I've got so far, though. As much as I want to do this right now, it feels like it's going to take a while to get everything together. What we need is infrastructure, and honestly, I think it's just time to pull the trigger and start building some of this stuff, which is why I've been collecting an inordinate amount of supplies to make this happen. We have to spend those same resources to get what we need. And the problem is this farm over here. This was not the killer I thought it was going to be. In fact, it's quite the disappointment. It basically produces not a lot of bamboo. You can really get a feel for that if you just watch how many bits grow each time it goes back and forth. It's just a few at a time. And so my supplies down here haven't been crafting as fast as I would have liked. Where's the chest one? Here it is. You see, it's just too slow. So what we're going to build up in this space is another one of Cybot's creations. It is a self-sustaining moss farm that produces bone meal. That is the first step in automating wood production, having a good bone meal farm. So this thing starts off with a bunch of smooth stone generators at its base and they are like interlocked and layered in a really crazy way that fortunately wasn't too difficult to put together but there was a lot of stone to place above this and tons of pistons that are all in position to push this stuff out to the front. So this front part I constructed in the dark so I kind of needed to turn on night vision for this replay. You can see we got a lot of hoppers with composters and as we build this thing up, you'll see the components coming together. We've got moss blocks that get bone milled from dispensers. And then there's going to be a platform on top that pushes the stone forward. And then there's hoppers at the end to collect all of the stone that gets turned into moss. Put it through the composters, which turns it into bone mill. And that bone mill gets sent back around on the blue ice that we placed a little earlier. The next thing I had to do was basically build the clock to control all of this. And so there are a couple of spots where I was placing observers and I just needed to break some of the other components so they didn't accidentally get powered. Unfortunately, you can put everything together really easy without setting off a clock or accidentally starting the farm. 
So this thing went off without a hitch. As soon as I turned it on, it's running smoothly. I don't have to do anything at all. And you can see what's going on here. We're pushing lots of stone from the back. The moss is spreading through that stone. The water is sweeping all of the drops into the front, which go down to the composters. And if we just zoom in down there, you can kind of see them blinking as they fill up. It's really cool. And here's what the back of the contraption looks like when all the redstone's running. Of course, this has been sped up. This thing is very loud. Fortunately, I can turn down the volume of the game in editing. There's just so much going on over here. But it's been running for a while now and producing tons of bone meal, which of course we'll be feeding into the other farms that we're going to put in this area. I feel really glad that I've done this. It's now encouraging me to build the next bunch of farms. So we're probably going to be doing a lot of that in the coming episodes. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.